Tourism is a $74 billion industry in this country. It has about 22.9 million stakeholders, that's all of Australia, and quite a few of you have made your comments known on Brumbrella about how you feel about the act. In fact, sometimes I think there's 20, 30, 23 million people out there that actually figure they could do my job better than me. Um, I'm sure many of them are right. The industry employs about 900,000 people directly and indirectly. It is the second largest employer in this, in this country. We, Tourism Australia, market in 22 markets in 17 languages around the world. So everything we have to do is really of a global scale. So our challenge is we set ourselves as this common goal, which is called the 2020, our, our tourism vision, which is to look at the industry and where we want it to go and try and take the industry from a 70 billion industry to a $140 billion industry by 2020. Our common ground was that we had this challenge. We had this challenge to be able to try and tell this story in 22 markets in 17 languages. We have that against the backdrop of continuous change. So how do we go about doing that? There's nothing like Australia. This was the first launch with a brand truth. And it was both as a brand truth and as a campaign line. There is nothing like it. It was a simple message that we thought there is nothing like this country. It stands out. And we knew this from a whole lot of research that we've done. This was really born out of two key insights. The first one, that the world travels to experience difference. When people go on holiday, they want to experience something different. They want to change, they want to be transformed. They want to have something that takes them out of their normal lives. And in a lot of the world, very heavy urbanized world, that's just a sense of freshness and space that this country delivers. And yes to that one person um, on my umbrella who commented that does Tourism Australia really understand China and understand the world? Yeah, we kind of do, I think, probably a little better than that person who thought we did nothing or knew nothing about what we did. Why China? 500,000 Chinese visitors to our country. 20% growth over the last year. And it's the number one must-see destination in China. In 2011, there was um, 30 million Chinese who traveled abroad in the first six months of 2011. 30 million. In the US, there was 28.5 million people who traveled abroad in 2010 in the whole year. So when you look at that and you start understanding the scale of what's out there, the numbers of people that are moving, you understand our opportunity. There is also 100 companies, 100, sorry, not companies, 100 countries out there that are competing against us in there. There's 100 countries that have actively set up their stall in China to try and bring people to it, to, to their country. So we realize we've got to be in there. Now we've been in there for about 10 years and done a pretty good job now increasing and we're one of the leaders in growth out of this market. So we know that there's more potential to come so it's a really important part for our industry to, to gather on. Then we came to our film. Now this thing as I've already mentioned was something that we wanted to inspire people with. We wanted to try and get people to um, really emotionally attach to Australia. Try and overcome the rational barriers of time and distance cost coming to this country. One of the first things that we did with this is we identified a piece of music that was going to sit behind that. Some of you may remember we, we worked together with YouTube Symphony Orchestra when they came here, um, I think it was about January, February last year. And they brought um, people from all around the world to come and play in this symphony orchestra they put together. And they chose, chosen Australia to do that. And we thought, this is fantastic. How do, we, how do we link up with this? So we identified four people in that orchestra and paired them up with four Australian um, relatively unknown artists and took those four pairings around the country to different places to write an original composition, a piece of work that could be inspired by the land, by the people that they met, to write this original piece of work. A song to the land, if you like. Something that they felt as travellers through it, what the country gave to them. And it's one of those pieces of music um, that really came to the fore and um, Dylan, who's the ECD at DDB, who we've done this together, was really driving this at, um, at this point um, we, after we had the music as, as a key element for our campaign. It was a real key call out between ourselves and DDB that this was going to be something that was really going to focus for it. We viewed the land, if you like, as a character in this. We didn't want to have any, uh, anybody stand up in front of it or any key individual. We wanted the land to really tell its own story. 
um, and that was one of the key themes through it. The rest was just to get some of the most incredible footage and all these little stories that play out through it to come to life. The one thing I think we all know is that it's not just about a big ad, it's about the complete story. Um, how are you going to bring that ad to life? And as I've already mentioned, we haven't got enough money to go out and put this into um, markets all around the world and play it out on TVCs and, and, and uh, on, on cinema. So we have to look at digital, we have to look at other ways of doing this. But one of the things we wanted to do is um, help that next step. Often when you have an ad, um, it's up here, um, and particularly when you've got a product that isn't well known, uh, and around the world, despite what a lot of us would like to think, Australia isn't necessarily the top thing in everyone's mind. It's difficult to go from one, one ad, a 30 second or a print ad or a piece of digital work, through to a massive big website to actually understand how I go about going on holiday, how, what, what next steps I should take, and to stop the constant deluge of people saying, go to my place, buy my thing. So what we wanted to do is create something in the middle. And we thought about this notion of storytellers, which is at Tourism Australia, what effectively we see we sell ourselves as. And we thought, well, how do we tell a story in, in today's world? How do we bring that to life? And one of the things we looked at was, um, now that we're going after sort of a more higher yielding audience around the world, was the tablet. And we looked at the tablet because it's one of those first devices that went more to boardrooms and, and meeting rooms rather than to playgrounds. And it's also a very highly visual one to be able to bring out a story to life and where we could interact and put different things together. So we teamed up um, with a company to actually produce one of the world's first fully interactive tablet apps for travel. Um, and this is really, what, uh, I guess, a cross between a travel guide, um, a travel show, and a book. And at its very best, it's a story about 13 different uh, couples or families that had their holidays, their experiences, while traveling around Australia to the 13 different locations that you saw in that, that ad that we, we, we did. So the tap ad um, app works as opening a book, and it's just a book. And inside this in, there's full audio through all of it, but I want to push that out to you today, what goes on. The first thing you see, obviously, is the ad that, that, that plays out here. And then from that, you can go into the map, which then looks at all the 13 different locations around the country where we shot this. So then the 13 places pop up, and then you can decide which ones to go to. So I don't know, maybe today, uh, the idea of going to Hayman Island. And then you have, once you get there, you have two options. Either you can experience more about the whole Hayman Island effect, or else you can discover more of what's going on in there. So we'll, we'll start off by experiencing a bit about Hayman. So then this goes into, the, if you like, the Hayman Island chapter in the book. And this is the story of these people that are looking for a holiday. And then you just act, activate it through using swipe, and it talk, talks about this family and their need for a holiday and why they went out there and their, life, their dream of going sailing around the Sundays. And as you go through the book, um, it peels off different layers and different parts of the story that come up. Um, and various different times, things happen. You might get a bit of video that's interlaced into here, or, um, might be able to get some uh, animation happening and think movement inside it, but it, it, it affects what it is, is a book. It brings to life the stories of what's happening out there um, in the course of this family's adventure in Hayman Island. But if you imagine the top of our funnel, we've got this great big ad that's going out there, and then gradually we bring people through with this app by telling them a bit more of the stories of the different places, and hopefully get them both inspired and informed about what's going on. We also then did this on our website. So we created a new hub for our website, australia.com, where when you go onto this, those 13 stories are there, you can watch our video, and you can go in to uh, find out a whole lot more about what's going on in each of the individual places on the website, not just on the app itself. We've had an explosive um, growth in social. We now receive, in Tourism Australia, we receive about 1,400 photographs a week on our fan page and we receive somewhere between 500 to 1,000 photographs a day through Instagram. So that's, we're sort of getting five or 6,000 photographs a, day, a week coming through to us through different platforms. Now that is amazingly powerful because it tells you what's going on out there. It shows you what people are interested in. It gives you great research in how people are thinking about what you're doing. Um, and this really provides an extraordinary platform for how we, can, how we work and how we bring social into the mainstream. Advocacy. This is all about people telling, as I've mentioned, um, their stories to the people around the world, connecting more with people. We now have just over 3 million people on Facebook. 
But that three million fans, what that does is it brings us out to a potential of sort of 360 million people, i.e. people that they network with, they connect with. We all know on average every everybody has 160 fans. So it sort of spills out to this and just explodes into this massive, um, massive sort of weight of information and people talking about us. So how do we do this? How do we get to three million fans? We've done it simply through the proposition of making our fans the hero. So one of the fans I want to talk to you now is about a guy called Harry. Harry Wiley goes onto our, web, onto our Facebook up to 10 times a day. He comments on it, he's there. Now what happens is, is that when somebody goes onto, our, onto it and says, Australia's too expensive, or Australia doesn't welcome Asian people, or any of these comments we all get for our brands, Harry's there. And with multitudes like Harry to comment back and saying, I love this country, it's great, I've never had this experience. Or when people come onto it and say, I'm thinking about going up to or Scone, or I'm thinking about going to wherever in this country, he will talk about the places he's been to, how wonderful it was, how to connect up there. In, in effect, he becomes part of our social media team. We have all these people doing that. Now, as part of this, we wanted to find out, well, who is Harry? Who are all these people that are doing this massive job for us constantly out of love for the brand, love for the country, and for, for, for what we're doing? So we, we looked at Harry. Here's Harry. <laughs> Harry is 81 years of age. Right? He and his wife have been married for 50 years. They've been retired for 26 years. And every year they spend three months on the road going around Australia. During that time they know a lot about this country. So anybody that thinks that social media platforms are really all for kids is absolutely nonsense. It is amazing the people that you turn up by listening and looking at who you've got there. So he's become a great fan of ours and a great supporter of ours. And thanks, Harry. When you people go on holiday, it's divided into three bits. Before you go on holiday, on holiday, and after holiday. I won't do the question now, but if you can imagine you've got 100% of satisfaction across those three bits, how much satisfaction do you have, how much enjoyment do you drive in going on before holiday? All the planning, all the thinking about it, planning to go on holiday. How much when you're actually in the holiday, when you're all out there with everybody? And how much do you enjoy the bit afterwards, where you come back, you've got the memories, you share and do all that? So research was done by American Express, um, and it came out to the fact that 40% uh, of enjoyment is derived pre, 20% only was derived during, and 40% after. What that got us to thinking is, well, what's the future? What is our next step now that we've done this? And we liken it to this idea of trip echo, which is kind of like the idea about the lifetime um, value of a customer, which is changing now from just, I'm spending this this year, this the next year, this the next year, and multiplying it through to the echo that this person leaves, about how they talk about the country, um, in our case. Pretty social, they go back and they show their slides, their photographs, and they connect with a few people. But the real value for us of having people having a great experience in this country, the real value, real value of word of mouth at speed, the real value of inspiring people when they come here, is that when they go back, they start telling their friends uh, their stories. Um, this sort of idea of Facebook jealousy, when people see people's book, um, Facebook posts, they want to go on holiday. This is the trip echo, this is the world we live in now. Our next goal is how do we activate this? How do we bring that all to the fore so we have all those people out there telling the stories of Australia, doing the job for Tourism Australia. Thank you all very much uh, for, for listening.